My ideal cabinet job? Secretary of Transportation. That comes with free first-class flights, right? Right? Secretary of State Ivanka Trump had a pretty, pretty successful trip to Asia in June. She sat in on lots of bilateral meetings between the United States and foreign powers. She kinda, sorta, chatted up the likes of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. She was front and center at the photo app after her father, aka the President of the United States, crossed into North Korea. And the president, her dad, even gave her a special shout out during a press conference in Japan. Quote, you probably saw that Ivanka Trump was, she's done a fantastic job and also a fantastic job in getting jobs for lots of people within our country. Almost 10 million people, end quote. It's not a sentence. Man, what a job Secretary of State Trump is doing, huh? What, what's that you say? Mike Pompeo is the Secretary of State, not Ivanka. I've made a huge mistake. A kid. But only barely, because for all intents and purposes, Ivanka Trump, the eldest daughter of the president, acted the part of the nation's top diplomat during a trip to Japan and South Korea for the G20 this summer. There was even this incredibly awkward photo op at the G20 where Ivanka doesn't really want to give ground to old Mike Pompeo as he tries to squeeze into the shop. So, so awkward. Oh, a lot of high school memories there for me. Now, none of this should surprise you or Donald Trump because he's been setting the stage for just this sort of weirdness from the second he got elected president, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, a lot longer than that. See, Trump has never trusted many people, and he listens to even fewer. Virtually all the people who fit in the trust tree are blood relatives of Trump's, and the first among equals in that group is Ivanka. There is no job, literally, Trump doesn't think his eldest daughter would be overqualified for. In an interview with The Atlantic earlier this year, Trump acknowledged that he had considered naming Ivanka to be the head of the World Bank because, quote, she's very good with numbers, end quote. <laughs> sure, that makes sense, good with numbers. But Trump wasn't done. Quote, if she ever wanted to run for president, I think she'd be very, very hard to beat, he said of Ivanka in that same interview. Now, sidebar, it's over here, side. If you don't think Ivanka Trump will, at some point in the future, at least float the possibility of running for president, I have a print newspaper industry that's going gangbusters and you should buy, and sidebar. Now, a dad being proud of his kid is neither new or all that newsworthy. On a totally unrelated note, my son is the greatest 10-year-old center back in American soccer history. But what makes this whole Ivanka situation a much bigger deal than how amazing my kid is at soccer, and again, he is amazing, is that she works in the White House as a senior advisor to her father, the president. And she does so with a hugely amorphous job title and no real portfolio of issues. Her official title is advisor to the president. Now in that role, quote, she focuses on the education and economic empowerment of women and their families, as well as job creation and economic growth through workforce development, skills training, and entrepreneurship. That's according to the White House website. But as Ivanka's turn at the G20 suggests, she can get involved in whatever she wants, whenever she wants, because she's the president's daughter. And who's gonna try to stand between this president and his eldest daughter? Which is why, of course, there is a federal anti-nepotism law in place. Passed in 1967, the law was seen as a response to President John Kennedy appointing his brother Robert as Attorney General following his election in 1960. So, how did Trump get around it to appoint Ivanka and her husband Jared Kushner to White House gigs, you ask? Good question. Answer, he did it very, very carefully. Now, here's what the anti-nepotism law actually says, quote, a public official may not appoint, employ, promote, advance, or advocate for appointment, employment, promotion, or advancement in or to a civilian position in the agency in which he is serving or over which he exercises jurisdiction or control any individual who is a relative of the public official." End quote. Well, that's easy to understand. Now, the key word there is agency. That word has been interpreted to exclude working in the White House. So Trump couldn't make Ivanka the Treasury Secretary, or, and I'm just throwing this out, Secretary of State. But according to the current interpretation of the law, 
he is legally within his rights with having her in a senior advisory role within the White House. Now, there's one other thing to think about here. All cabinet secretaries, not to mention the heads of the FBI, CIA, and lots of other important agencies, are required to be vetted and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Not so Ivanka Trump or Jared Kushner. Now, you add it all up, six to carry one, and you get this. The daughter of the president is engaging in diplomacy on the world stage with absolutely no throttle on what she says or does. She has no specific background in foreign policy or international relations. She has not been confirmed by the Senate to her role. If that doesn't worry you, well, you're just not paying attention. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them out.